Jimmy Page is arguably the greatest master of guitar tone in the history of rock and roll. And today, I'm going to reveal the secret to Jimmy Page's tone, and it's not what you think. You'll be very surprised. Hi, I'm Carl Baldessar, and apart from being a composer and a musicologist, I have been studying Jimmy Page's guitar tone for over 50 years. Like you, I've spent countless years and dollars chasing after his tone. But I finally realized I was looking in all the wrong places, and chances are you were too. And before I begin, let me expose one of the greatest myths about his tone, or any great guitar player's tone, and that is, you can't buy it. It's not in the amp, it's not in the guitar, it's not in the pedals. It comes from another source. So before I give you the secret, let me kind of just run down what, what my basic setup is and let you understand exactly what I'm doing to get the tone. So the first thing I'll show you is that I have just a basic uh, tube amp. I think that's really important to getting the sound. And um, I have a Fender Deluxe Reverb, and uh, it just, it's a clean, clean guitar sound. And, um, and that's really important for the back end of your signal chain. And then on the front end here, um, I'm using um, a Les Paul, but I could use any guitar to get these tones. But I definitely do need humbuck pickups. And um, I also have my pickups where I split them so I can get them to be single coil. So, so I've got the humbuck and then I can, I can make them single coil. But you can switch guitars, use a Telecaster for a single coil or a Les Paul with a humbuck to get those sounds. It doesn't even matter. Um, and then in between from the, the pickups to the amp, I have uh, one uh, gain pedal that I'm using predominantly, and it's a very, very small amount of gain. And it gets me, it gets me that sound. And it's not terribly overdriven, as you can see. Um, and I'm using for that sound uh, a Bogner LaGrange pedal. And you can see that um, I have the gain structure set to about um, less than nine o'clock. And here's a really important secret number one for Jimmy Page. You wanna sound like Jimmy Page, start turning down your distortion pedals, turn down your gain pedals. He plays way more clean than you ever thought. And most guitar players, myself included, always would oversaturate their signal. And that is actually going in the wrong direction. Ironically, his sound actually got cleaner as the years went on. He started rolling back more gain. He, he would create gain structure with other sorts of devices, and I'll explain that in a moment. But uh, you basically want to just roll off a lot of gain to start getting like Jimmy Page. So that's my basic root sound. Tube amp, humbuck pickup, and a little gain going into it. I do add um, a little more push of gain. When I want to have a solo, I just put a, um, a little spark overdrive pedal. It's not that different. So, and that's it. The second secret to Jimmy Page's tone is something that he said many, many years, decades ago that I heard him say this. He said, distance makes depth. And when you listen to his guitar, he's using a lot of room ambience and he's also using some you know, reverbs and some delays to get these incredible spaces. And actually, when you do add some like reverb and delay into your signal chain, you're actually getting a little more gain structure. So when you start with less distortion from your gain pedal, you're gonna add back some gain structure when you run it through a reverb or a delay pedal. Let me show you, that actually broadens the sound and gives you a little bit more delay. So here's a very clean, raw sound. Okay, that's... But when I add a verb to it, You see how the space, that space adds a little bit of gain and it gives you a little bit of depth and texture and put a little slight little delay on there. You're getting really close now to Paige's sound, you know. So it's distance makes depth and that's adding to the sound. And last but not least, here is the secret to the sound. It's not the amp. It's not the pedals, it's not even the guitar. The most important part of the signal chain is the head, the heart, and the hands. That's the only signal chain that you really need. And what I mean by that is that you're gonna get that sound with knowing the music, your head, and hearing the music. As Jimmy Page said many years ago, 
he also said that if you can hear it properly, you can play it properly. So you have to get your mind around the fact that you have to listen and make sure you're hearing it accurately. You have to kind of know, using your mind and your brain and your knowledge, to know what the parts are that you're playing. Having a thorough knowledge of the part and hearing it accurately takes care of the, you know, one of the most important parts of the signal chain, which is your head, just getting it all right around that. And then from there, you have to express the part through your heart and passion. Jimmy Page is such an express, expressive guitar player. And so many of the great guitar players, you know, Richie Blackmore, you know, Pete Townsend, Steve Vai, they all have this passionate way of expressing their sound. So it's passing through kind of their, you know, their, their, their thought process. It's coming through the passion of their heart. And then the most important link in the signal chain is your hands. And these are the delivery instruments, and these are all the pedals that you need because the way you use your fingers and your hands as they address the strings of the guitar and the notes that you're playing or the chords that you're playing, you are absolutely influencing the sound. And don't overlook in your signal chain the power of your hands because I actually can create more gain and more distortion just by how I'm addressing the string. So if I strike a string loud and hard, Think about it, if I'm striking it loud and hard, I'm increasing the volume that I'm putting into the amplifier. If I play it lightly, different tone. How do I get a different tone? So, so with my hands, not just volume, but also just the way I'm micro-muting as I go to kind of clean up the sound or, or open up the sound. So all of that is so important. So I guess the bottom line it, to this whole thing is that you, um, um, you, you really don't want to use pedals to mask what you're doing. You want to use pedals and amplifiers and guitars to enhance what you're doing. I like to think about it like makeup. You know, people will wear makeup, there's, there's two ways that they wear it. One is to kind of cover things up and mask, and then other people will wear makeup where they're actually enhancing what's already good. So if you get the head, the heart, and the hands, if you know the music really well, and you play it with passion, and you are able to execute it with your hands, you are all the way where you need to be. And then all of these tools wind up being enhancements to it. And that's exactly what Jimmy Page, I mean, he was literally a painter. He was a, an impressionistic painter using all of his soundscapes. But what was behind all that were just unbelievably formed riffs and, and licks and song structures. And everything else was there to, you know, to illustrate it more clearly. Now, to prove the point in terms of where the tone is, is coming from, I'm going to play uh, just a couple of opening figures from uh, maybe one or two songs from each of their albums. I'm going to blaze through them kind of quickly. And you'll see that as varied as the sounds that he had on all, on all the songs on, on, that, on those albums, I'm going to really pretty much play it through this, the same rig. I'll maybe pull out a a delay pedal here to kind of get it to sound a little closer to what he has. But I'm just going to use my guitar. Um, I'll occasionally split the, um, the the pickup so I get more of a single coil sound. But let's let's get started on that. So the first, I'm going to take you right back to the first album. I'm going to play uh, you know the the uh, the riff for Communication Breakdown. He used a Telecaster back then. I'm going to use my Les Paul. It doesn't matter. I've just got kind of split the pickup. And the, again, the way he played it and attacked it, he's using this Ponticello kind of picking method where he's down here by the bridge and you can see how the attack is, you get the sound. Here we go. <laughs> there you go, that's the sound. Let's move on to the, the second album. The opening track from the second album um, is Whole Lot of Love. And um, you know, that's the classic, Les Paul humbuck uh, pickup sound that he had that he um, first played on uh, Led Zeppelin II. Again, where is it coming from? That sound is actually coming from knowing how he's playing the riff. He's playing the riff with two phrases. He's got an opening question and he's got an answer phrase and I think about it that way and I get that I get the riff sound because of that. He also you have to know very deeply that his technique on this where he's uh, bending, he's um, kind of double stopping the, um, the D. He's fretting the D and he's playing the open D and that's part of that sound. You're getting more gain when you do that. So you question. 
and you got the answer, which you have to come in on the downbeat. <laughs> So there you go, a whole lot of love. So we go to the third album, Immigrant Song. Again, I'm gonna kind of flip back to a single coil, kind of pickup sound, exact same pedals, exact same amplifier, and you get the great Immigrant Song riff. <laughs> So there you have the Immigrant Song riff. Let's move on to the, uh, the fourth album, The Sound. Again, the rig is the same. We're gonna do the, uh, the great rock and roll riff. And then I also just wanna do this riff because this will show you just uh, another sound that he would use, which is, uh, this is Black Dog, but this is the live version, 1971 BBC in Paris. And this is where he's using both pickups. And that's the other important thing to mention here, that use all of the guitar, okay? It's really important in getting different sounds and different tones. And I'm using the entire guitar where I'm using both pickups here, and I have the, um, the neck pickup split, um, so it's single coil. And I have the humbuck here, and I blend them together to get something close to what he's got in, uh, in uh, the, uh, uh, the BBC Paris show. <laughs> And the other thing that's important, again, when I'm talking about the head, the heart, and the hands, I know what makes that riff so sound the way it sounds is that he's using a tremolo that he didn't use in the studio version. He's going, putting a tremolo, or vibrato, I should say. And those vibratos really make that sound stick out. Moving on to the fifth album, The House of the Holy, an epic, huge guitar riff, and uh, the sound is just the same. Nothing's changed. I'm going humbuck right into it. Yeah, and that's all coming out of damping. This is really where I'm using my hands. You know, I'm damping with the wrist and I'm using kind of short staccato sounds with the fingers and that's changing the game structure. You know, I got the picking is a little chippy sounding. So again, it's so I, I just want to make the point that so much of this tone is coming out of the hands and you know, deliberately knowing what you have to do before you even make a sound. Have a plan for sound before you make a sound. So let's move on to Physical Graffiti. I'm going to play the opening cut from that album, and this is Custard Pie. I'm going to pull a little bit of reverb out because it's a little drier sounding, but you'll hear what my sound is like without the reverb on it. <laughs> So there you have the custard pie riff again. I'm just using a lot of muting and um, you know, I'm kind of compressing it. You know, your hands are also like compressors. You can literally kind of you know, gate and close off the sound and that actually also does affect the signal chain and the way the gain structure is and custard pie is a good example of that. Let's move on to the, uh, the, the next album after Physical Graffiti, which was Presence. And I'm gonna give you the Nobody's Fault But Mine riff which again has the both pickups uh, with the uh, neck pickup being um, split into single coil. And it's this epic chord structure which goes like this. <laughs> Nobody's fault but mine. Very cool. And finally, we're going to move to their last album, In Through the Outdoor, and the opening track called In the Evening. 
And this is a really good example of proving the point that you don't have to have the same equipment that the, the original guitar players were using. In fact, on this song, he was using a Stratocaster that had a vibrato bar. And um, I'm just gonna use a Les Paul with a humbuck pickup and use my standard sound, but I kind of know how that song is supposed to sound and I know sort of the parts and it's gonna sound reasonably convincing, I think. Check it out. So I'm simulating the, the, the vibrato bar, but uh, it's pretty darn close. So it's only because I know the part, I know the sound, and I'm able to communicate that through my hands to the guitar. So there you have it. The tone comes from familiarity with the artist and the music that you're playing and not so much about your gear and your equipment. So you can save a lot of money and really just start learning the songs thoroughly and learning how to play them as uh, um, authentically as you possibly can. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you'd enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe and uh, send me some comments or any suggestions you'd like to have on future episodes. I'm Carl Baldessar.